All right, hey friends, uh, here with a very special guest. His name is Luke, okay? And what we're gonna be doing in this, uh, in this chat is just having a conversation as to uh, Luke's, um, you know, Luke's experiences being a student here at McMaster University, okay? He's also super involved in the nuclear energy industry and has a lot of industry experience as well. And just overall very well-rounded student um, who is making some huge impacts in the young generation nuclear space as well. So uh, thank you so much, Luke, for coming out or thanks so much for hosting me at McMaster. Of course, yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, happy that you could come out and uh, see the reactor earlier in the day, but uh, happy to talk with you. Awesome, awesome. Well, I guess, you know, just to start off, like why don't you introduce yourself and kind of talk about some of your experiences in the nuclear energy industry. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, great. Uh, so my name is Luke. I am in the engineering physics uh, degree here at McMaster, engineering physics and society. Um, so what that means is engineering physics is uh, kind of a mix of uh, different areas in the engineering field. So you can take specializations such as optical communications, uh, LEDs and lasers, photovoltaics. And for me, what I'm doing is uh, nuclear systems, nuclear engineering specifically. Uh, so I'm in my sixth year uh, of engineering physics and society and I've had 30 months of co-op experience in that time. I uh, got pretty lucky uh, in terms of those co-op experiences, met a lot of great people like Osama, uh, and, and got a real chance to apply my degree and what I've learned here in, in the workforce. Got to, great, got to build some really great connections and uh, uh, really test my skills out there in the real world. So after university, I have a job lined up. Um, and I'm really excited to, to get right into it. Uh, also here at McMaster, uh, we started up um, an NAYGN chapter here. Uh, for those of you that don't know what NAYGN is, it's North American Young Generation of Nuclear. Uh, there are over 100 chapters across North America, and we are one of, the, uh, one of the few university chapters here. And what we do, a part of this nonprofit organization, is really uh, energize the future of nuclear workers uh, by offering professional development, uh, networking, communication, public outreach, um, and really bringing our focus here at McMaster is bringing the employees, uh, employers to the students to kind of demystify working in the nuclear industry. Uh, many people think it's daunting, but once you get that foot in the door, it it's opens a large uh, array of possibilities. So that's a little bit about me um, and, and my time here at Mac. Um, so, you know, when you're meeting with your peers and classmates and, uh, you know, you're sharing this industry experience, you're sharing um, some of the things you're working on in terms of NAYGN, what are, uh, I'm sure you kind of share that passion and get other, other students passionate about the nuclear energy industry as well. So, like, what are some of the top questions that students usually ask you? Can I work in the nuclear industry? As an engineering physics student specializing in nuclear engineering, very easy for me to say yes to myself and other people in my program. Um, but if you're in mechanical engineering, electrical, civil, uh, et cetera, et cetera, even not in engineering, uh, like I said, people think it's unattainable. They think it's this behind the curtain uh, industry that you need to take courses on to work in it uh, extensively. Uh, so it's really, um, that's, the, that's the largest question is like, oh, can I work in it and how? So. As a part of NAYGN, it's kind of bridging that gap uh, between students that don't yet know about the possibilities of this, you know, really rapid growing industry that we're in right now. It's great that you're you're bringing that level of transparency, right? I think uh, it was really cool attending the um, the NAYGN conference, that the regional conference that your uh, your your group hosted or played a part in hosting. So that was a really fun event. So maybe we can show some pictures <laughs> from that event up there as well. <laughs> And um, I, I think another question that I have genuinely is, you know, I, I have an under, undergrad in nuclear engineering, so that's what I studied. Uh, but I've always wondered what you study in engineering physics. So could you tell me a little bit about um, the engineering physics program, uh, your experiences, and also um, how do you specialize in nuclear, in engineering physics, and would you recommend that? Bias is yes, I'd recommend it. Um, you know, you, you have, really open season when it comes to job opportunities since we are in a really rapidly growing field. Um, what engineering physics has been for me has largely been nuclear. 
uh, like I said in the beginning of this, you can also go into photovoltaics, lasers and LEDs, optical communications. Uh, we like to call it, you know, build your own pizza. So you're not stuck in a funneled degree when you're in engineering physics. You can, you can choose engineering courses uh, like I have. I'm taking some electrical engineering courses. I'm taking some mechanical engineering courses. But to specialize, I'm also taking one of six or seven nuclear-focused engineering courses. And what that means is I've learned about uh, fusion, nuclear engineering, reactor physics, um, that uh, each of those topics going into some more detail on every level. And then, of course, we have the nuclear reactor here on campus, which Osama toured today. And I'm a tour guide there myself. Um, we got to do nuclear labs there. So that involves using those neutrons from the research reactor in our labs to see how they interact with different types of material. And we also get to uh, observe and uh, see how xenon poison works when we turn on a reactor to reach criticality in the morning. Uh, so that was another one of our labs, which is very interesting to do. Wow, no, that's, that's honestly, that's an ocean's worth of like knowledge and experience that you're getting there. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience, like being a tour guide for the McMaster reactor. Um, like I know it's one of, this, uh, one of the most powerful neutron sources in, in Canada, right? For those that, that don't know, quick fun fact. Uh, what are some of the reactions that you get from people? And uh, what are some of the highlights of like working there? Like w what are some of the fun things that you've, you've experienced? So the majority of the tours that I've uh, hosted are for grade 9, 10, 11, 12 high school students, mainly 10, 11, 12. Um, and it's interesting to see how little they know about nuclear energy. Mm. I'm also doing an inquiry project about nuclear energy. Uh, side note here, nuclear energy in the different curriculums across the different provinces in all of Canada. Ontario suited, uh, as, as you would expect, is the best in terms of how much they teach about nuclear. But even when we have grade 11, grade 12 students come into the reactor, um, they don't know much about it. So it's really fun opening their eyes about how nuclear works, A, um, breaking that down into really understandable terms that's you know, not this behind the curtain technology that you, it's, you, you have to be a genius to understand. Um, breaking that down, showing them you know, what the possibilities of nuclear is, showing them how, uh, how we can work with this technology, how we have been working with technology for over 60 years uh, at McMaster even, um, and then kind of transitioning our research reactor here uh, to the power reactors we have in Ontario as well, and, and kind of showing them that it's not something to be afraid of, that you can be in the reactor, you, you won't grow an extra limb, uh, just by going on a tour, uh, and, and it's it's really great to see uh, their attentiveness and and them asking questions, wanting to learn more about nuclear, and and then potentially you know since they're in grade 11, 12, they ask about what programs to go into, and you know having nuclear as a job opportunity for them that they can think about uh, when they go into university is, is something. Then you know, that is, is great because that will just help us grow even more as an industry. And we'll need it for climate change. Absolutely. Like, you know, one, one thing that I was curious about is, you know, when I saw the, the, the bluish glow, the Cherenkov effect, um, for those that know, don't know what it's called, um, coming out of those reactors, like, it's, it's quite the sight to see, right? And, um, you know, even for me, even though I studied it and part of the industry, it's, it's like, wow, like, this is incredible, right? Uh, what are the kids usually like? What's, what's the first thing they usually say? Like, what's the first uh, reaction that people usually have when they see a nuclear reactor in a pool? Is the is the water blue or is that a glow? They don't. And, the, and then it's what is that glow? Why is it glowing? Like Cherenkov radiation. I'm in there a handful of times a month doing tours, and I never get bored of it. It's so fun to see. Um, that's their main question: is is about the blue glow, and then. Also, you always have somebody ask about uh, accidents as well, so I'll address that uh, when, when, they, when they bring it up. But it's, it's really the curiosity questions are being asked during the tour rather than the typical waste and accident questions. They're more 
focus towards, oh, how does this technology work, rather than those defensive questions that get asked. Nice. No, that's good to know. That's good to know that, you know, kids at that age are genuinely curious, right, about the technology. Um, uh, tell, tell me about, like, some of your general highlights in your undergrad at, at McMaster University. Um, uh, like, you know, in, in, in terms of just being here for six years, well, four years, but yeah. two years on co-op and internships, um, what are some of your hi highlights, like, your, your best top experiences? Okay. Um, keeping this to an academic... Uh, point of view here. Um, I guess being in this room right now, a lot of friends have been made in here. This is where we're at right now. It's called the Quantum Tunnel. Uh, this is an engineering physics a department room uh, specifically for us. We get key cards to come in here. Um, and in those first, second years of university, uh, you're in this room with a bunch of your classmates. Uh, doing assignments, you're up till four, ordering pizza in here, getting samosas, doing little events. Um, you can't see it, but there's Bob Ross paint nights here on the walls. Um, this room, a lot of friends have been made, a lot of late nights. Uh, so that's you know a great highlight here is the camaraderie that I experienced as an engineering physics program. And I think a reason of that is our program's super small. We have classes the size of 30, 40 tops in some instances, especially in the nuclear side of things. Um, and then I'd say the other hi a, a, another highlight here, the reactor and technical courses, and then now in my capstone, building something that's applicable to the nuclear industry, getting to go in the student machine shop, the library thawed maker space, using you know, resources hands-on to build something physical that will be used in the industry, uh, you know, that is a highlight um, that I, I think you know, makes an impact in that sense, and I'm pretty proud of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And just, just, to, uh, uh, just to build on that, um, like what impact do you want to make in the nuclear energy space? Like, you know, I know you're about to graduate, fourth year's coming up. Uh, what's, uh, what's one of the What's one of the main things in which you want to make that impact? So I'm pretty early in my career, and I know that from talking with other people in the industry, your career in the nuclear industry is never linear. You're always going to be thrown into some other department or job, and it's, it flows. Um, where a general goal that I have and a mission that I want to achieve in the nuclear industry is put reactors on the grid as fast and as cheap as possible. Whether that's, um, you know, sorry, not putting reactors on the grid, putting megawatts of nuclear energy on the grid. So whether that's refurbishing our current fleet, whether that's putting SMRs on the grid, whether that's putting a new can grid on the grid, whether that's through licensing, project engineering, uh, the technical side of things, safety, that's what I want to focus my career on is, is, is getting more megawatts on the grid because that is what's going to save us from climate change. We need to do it. Our future depends on it. That's what brought me into this industry in the first place is the realization of the possibility of nuclear energy and how it can really transform and shape our electrification process. To, to aid in the fight against climate change. And how that path looks exactly, I'm not too sure. I'm open to where it brings me. Um, I'm not going to close any doors along the way, uh, but keeping that goal in the back of my mind where I want to have an impact, I think that's just where I'm at right now, and we'll see where it takes me. Awesome. That's, that's great to know that you know, you're passionate about uh, of nuclear energy and, and something like climate change, right? Which I think it's impacting all of us right now, right? Like we're in January and, um, you know, it hasn't been snowing, right? Like, you know, you see these climate trends and it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty worrying. One, awesome. one other question that I have for you is, you know, it's great to know that you did uh, six, uh, two years on, well, th more than two years, 30 months on different co-ops and internships. Uh, that's something that uh, I did as well. I did two years, not 30 months, but I think around 24 months on co-ops and internships. 
Um, and that's something that I really uh, advocate for, especially with uh, you know, younger students like that are going and studying nuclear engineering or engineering in general. I'm like, hey, get that co-op experience, right? Because uh, although you may graduate one year earlier and you, know, you may say that, okay, I'll make like maybe a couple dollars more as a full time, right? Um, I wanna ask you, what's your pitch for, for advising students to get their foot in the door in co-ops and internships early? Yeah. The information you gain and the name you build for yourself when you have a lot of co-ops, whether it's in the nuclear industry or not, it propels you forward in both your knowledge of the industry and your connections that you make. And when you get to that point about, okay, well, I don't want to have a co-op because I want to graduate earlier and I want to uh, make more money. For my case, I've had, for probably both of our cases, employers recognize your co-op experience and they'll adjust your entry pay accordingly. So I'm making a lot more off the bat than what somebody uh, would be if they just did no co-ops. Uh, they recognize that experience and you know, they'll put you in a position right off the bat that has more responsibility. Um, and honestly, for me, I was in no rush to graduate, so that could be a little bit of a bias there. Um, when it comes to going back to class and may potentially losing some of your friends that have graduated, um, in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't matter. You're always gonna have classmates, you're always gonna make new friends, um, and you're always gonna have that university experience, and you, know, you can be a student for longer, which is nice, you don't have as much, you know, real life responsibilities when you're still a student, you can still play that card later on down the road. Um, but you know, when you have that work experience and you're, when you're actually working in the field, um, you get a better understanding of the industry as a whole. So you're not going into your first job blind. You know what, you know what to expect um, and you know what company you wanna work for a little bit more. So, in your co-op terms, I know for McMaster, uh, it's really flexible. Um, I did an eight month, two eight months back to back, and then a couple four months in there as well. Pretty much all uh, different companies. I think I did three different companies um, and different aspects of the nuclear industry as well. So I was able to get a feel for what you know, if I want to go into a utility or a consultant or R&D um, or, or a vendor for that sense. And that's, you know, it gives you a better sense as to where your first step is going to be. Um, and those connections you make along the way are great. Uh, to say one thing about how you can get those co-ops, I am the biggest advocate, and I tell the members of NAYGN this, is you got to go to conferences. That's where you make easy um, connections, conferences, job fairs, get yourself in front of um, an employer because when they see a student just interested in nuclear, um, it's really a reverse job interview at that point. You're kind of just asking them about, hey, what's your company about? And they're kind of selling you to work for them or just they just want to get you interested in nuclear. So it's always a wholesome conversation when you go to conferences. Um, you have that ability to act naive to, to ask them, hey, what is, this, what is your company about? And they'll gladly talk about it. Hey, what kind of projects are you working on? So you build the connections like that. You go around to all the booths. Um, you, get a good, you get a good sense of industry as a whole. You make connections. You, you open doors for job opportunities. Um, and all around, uh, you can really go there for free as well. Uh, there's many student sponsorships available. Uh, you just apply relatively easy. Um, and, and then luckily, if, if you get chosen, you can go for free. And um, I know I didn't get to go for free my very first conference. And I invested $400 to go. And that might have been the best $400 I've spent in my life because my very first co-op in the nuclear industry came out of that. And, you know, that door just opened. That's awesome. No, it's, it's great to hear these success stories. And uh, well, tell me a little bit more about the success story because... Um, you know, that, that's something that I really advocate for as well as, you know, go to these conferences, 
shake hands, meet people, and refine your networking skills. And it seems like it seems like you you did that, right? Um, and you were successful. That's so share with me the success story of like getting your first co-op. What did you do differently that other students may have done, not done? Uh, because you know when I go to conferences, sometimes you see those you know students kind of hanging out with their own friends, yeah. not really kind of getting getting out of their comfort zone, out of their small bubble, right? Um, and meeting employers. So tell me a little bit about what you did differently and kind of um, what strategies you may apply, you may have applied it to, to your success. Um, I always had a plan. Every conference you go to, you have a plan. Um, whether that's to talk to as many new companies as possible, whether that's headhunting a company that you wanted to work for, which is what I did for my first co-op. Um, you know, headhunted them and you just tried to talk to them as much as possible organically. Um, and, and, you know, a co-op sparked out of that because they saw the interest in me wanting to work for them. They knew I was committed to the industry because they've seen me so many times. Um, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> making an action on that plan. Like, you can have a plan and get the jitters when you're at the conference. You know, it may be intimidating to go and talk to somebody new. Um, I know I still feel that sometimes as well uh, when I'm thrown into a completely new type of conference outside of the nuclear industry. So if I go to a clean energy conference, I'm, I'm there knowing nobody and I'm kind of back to square one um, where I don't know anybody in the room. Um, now when I go to nuclear conferences, I know a lot of people in the room, it's a lot easier to make that first approach. But that first approach um, is hard at first and it is a skill that you build upon as you continue to talk to people and make those icebreakers. Uh, it's something that you actively have to work on and it's not a talent that people just have. Everybody goes through this um, and it's just you telling yourself that you can go up and, and talk to people and, and you see those benefits almost immediately um, when you start to have that organic conversation and you know the words are flowing really that key. way. Um, and then. Uh, that, that's, that's how you can be successful at conferences and make the most out of it. That's awesome. You know, you know what's funny? It really reminds me of my um, it's kind of success story of how I got my second co-op. Oh, actually, my third co-op. It was actually at the C CNA conference as well. And uh, at the time, I didn't, I didn't get the scholarship, right? So I invested. I made that investment too. I'm like, you know what? I'm putting 400 bucks down. Let's do it, right? And uh, what ended up happening was I actually met a, an ex-executive from a uh, French nuclear company, EDF, Energy de France there. And he was working at Framatome at the time, uh, leading some initiatives in Kincardine. And so, uh, you know, I, I spoke to him and uh, made that connection. And he's like, hey, you know, you should come up to the Bruce and you work with us. So that was, that was like my success story, which it was like, oh, shoot. Uh, it was so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's actually very similar, right? And I'm pretty sure we met at the conference too, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what year that was, like maybe, was maybe 2019? 2019. Uh, yeah, 2019 was. Yeah, we were lucky eh, with, with pre-COVID and those opportunities. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then once it moved online, it got a lot harder yeah. to get those conferences and, and execute those plans. But you know, now that we're back in person, everybody's eager to be back in person and, yeah. and, and you know, get to talking to students. Um, the industry is growing more now than ever. And all employers, I can speak from experience, applying to jobs, full-time jobs, co-ops, they realize um, that they need more people and it's a competition now. So there is a lot of interest for students when you go to these conferences. It's, I would say more important than ever is to go there now because industry is rapidly growing. Absolutely, yeah. And the link below, check out CNA Conference. Not sponsored by CNA, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you do want to sponsor me, you can, uh, but that's optional. Um, <laughs> And you know, just pulling on that thread a bit, um, Luke, I want to ask you more about NAYGN, North American Young Generation in Nuclear. It's a bit of a mouthful for those in the industry. I know folks always say NAYGN, NAGYN, and they're always mixing up the acronym. Yeah. But it's a pretty cool organization, and I, I know you, you're, you're actually a chapter. So Luke is a chapter lead here, right? Which is, uh, which is a great leadership position at the university and tell me a bit about your experiences with NYGN. 
Yeah, so uh, NAYGN, we develop leaders to energize the future in nuclear. Uh, we have four pillars, professional development, knowledge transfer, networking, and public information. So here at McMaster, we try to hit uh, all of those pillars. Uh, we bring employers to the students here through industry nights. Um, we have one actually this month. Uh, we're bringing six different employers to the campus, each giving a 10 minute presentation about what they do. And then we have a networking section afterwards. Uh, we also do um, public information events on campus. So like setting up a booth, pretty much just talking to people on campus about nuclear, seeing how they're interested, uh, seeing you know, if they've visit to, visited the reactor on campus, stuff like that. So really just getting the word uh, of nuclear out there and answering people's questions. And then we also host some social events here. So nuclear trivia night, uh, we do tours of the McMaster reactor. We'll get together, eat some samosas, play some card games, you know, build that camaraderie here as a club. Um, and, you know, really NAYGN for me started when I was in my third year, third or second year, and moved up the executive uh, team to now president. And honestly, it's, it's been a great icebreaker at conferences, uh, as well as just, you know, leading a team um, outside of work and, and, you know, building those connections with, with your coworkers and, and your, your fellow students. And it's just really a fun thing to do to, to put on these large events that'll benefit um, other students looking to get jobs and, and ultimately the nuclear industry as, as we get more people working for us. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's great to know that you're, you're so involved on campus and, and really uh, giving back, right? Giving back to the school community, right? Um, and really passionate about that. Tell me a little bit about Atomic Ambassadors. I know you're also part of that program. So do you want to share, do you want to share a little bit more about your experiences there and, and how, how, how you find that? Yeah, so I got into Generation Atomic uh, through NYGN, one of the NYGN events I heard about Generation Atomic. Um, Rather than uh, going to nuclear specific conferences and kind of just building your own network and, and preaching to the choir in a sense, um, what the Atomic Ambassadors program does, that Generation Atomic uh, is, is, is leading, is what we do as ambassadors is we will go to conferences outside of the nuclear industry. Um, so I've gone to a renewable energy conference. You go to general clean energy conferences, business conferences, you have executives outside the nuclear industry, <coughs> excuse me, that will play a role in ultimately uh, funding it, putting it on the grid, making those external decisions to, to be the kind of supporting framework to put nuclear on the grid. As when we go to these nuclear conferences, it's more of a technology focus, like what can we do to make ourselves better? But when you're going out to these clean energy conferences, um, you're, you're advocating for nuclear, you're, you're, you're letting people know about nuclear energy as a whole, what it can offer, and, and ultimately um, answering questions that they have, that, that they're just curious about nuclear and, and letting them know what the true facts are and, and changing their mind at the end of the day. You know, it's maybe not, Getting that, uh, getting that person to be a hardcore nuclear supporter where I am or you are, but it's you know moving the needle a little bit. Talk every conversation at these clean energy conferences. You want to move them a little bit more towards nuclear. You're never going to get that full shift right away, but you know the more conversations you have as a professional, they trust you as a professional. So um, they'll listen to you. They'll take your word, and and the more that they hear about this kind of organically. You know, you're not pushing facts down their throat either. You're just talking to them like a human being, listening to their side as well. Um, but you know, being a part of these conferences, going to these clean energy conferences, um, you feel that you're making an impact as well in that sense. That's really cool. That's, that, that seems like a really interesting experience, uh, you know, going to, um, going to areas where you know, people believe that Renewables will save the world, right? Yes. And telling them that, hey, listen, <laughs> buddy, this is not the case, right? Yeah. 
So t tell me about, do you have any like fun stories from, from, that, from, that, from those experiences or from that, from that conference? Yeah, it, like you said, uh, people, um, some people are just energy illiterate. <laughs> like they are surrounded by people that tell them that wind and solar is the savior. They, they are the hope and everything else is the high road. Um, and you know, really not looking beyond that. So when I talk to those type of people, it's kind of listening to them, understanding where they're coming from and their context of what they've been uh, taught, but then kind of just, you know, showing them the door to nuclear and opening it a bit. You're like, hey, like this is an also a clean energy uh, that is, you know, we could, you know, potentially work together rather than, um, shut us out of every deal that you're a part of. <laughs> you know, we're, we're an energy source that needs to be included in these clean energy conferences. So if, you know, would you like to know anything more about nuclear? Do you have any questions um, that you have pertaining to nuclear energy? It could be about, you know, anything, fission, accidents, waste, like I'm your guy. And then you get that conversation going. Uh, you ask them about how the wind and solar and, and battery storage is currently going and, and you know, you have that conversation, and, and, and at the end of it, uh, you can see that they're a little bit more receptive to it. But it's it's kind of really funny. You know, you get you get to see one of those people every time um, that are just not with it in terms of where solar and wind can really take you on a large scale over many years that we're looking for, because we have a very very big. Uh, uh, um, gap we need to fill. And, you know, just in uh, the next 30 years in Canada, I believe we have to triple our electricity. Triple. <laughs> like, this is a, a crazy task that we need to do. And, um, you know, going to these renewable energy conferences, they think it's too big of a task for them themselves. And they're kind of panicking. Um, but they've not yet included us, which is, you know, why, why the atomic ambassadors and go there. Damn, that's, I think that's really brave of you to, <clears throat> to put yourself out there and actually go out to one of these events, right? Yeah. Uh, because I'm sure there's people very passionate about, about a certain technology and when they hear a different opinion, then they may act very differently, right? So uh, uh, kudos to you for actually, you know, having the courage to actually go out there and, and uh, connect with these people and uh, try, to, try to translate, you know, the benefits of nuclear to them. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's not so much anti-nuclear people that are there. It's just like they're not nuclear literate. Like they're not aware. They're not aware. So it, it's you're you're never like met with a hard wall when you talk to people at these conferences. It's more of like a a, a two-way conversation that they they actually want to learn more about nuclear, which is surprising to what I I thought it was going to be like. Nu don't talk to me about nuclear, but it's. It, it, everybody that I talked to at these conferences, they, they had a, a genuine interest in it. And I think, you know, that, that's something that was surprising to me is even at this renewable conference that I went to, they were, they were very open and, and curious about nuclear. Awesome. Well, you know, I, uh, uh, Luke, it was, it was, it was really nice uh, getting the chance to chat with you, exploring McMaster University, which we're going to do soon. Yes. Um, and also learning about your experiences. I think, I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal to, um, uh, to showcase a uh, student that is really um, uh, so well-rounded in not only their career, but also their academics. And then on top of that with extracurricular activities as well, right? So I think, um, you know, when this podcast is finished, I'm definitely gonna send to my little brother to show that, hey, listen, you know, this is a, this is a great way to, um, you know, to, to become a young leader, right? In, in the nuclear energy industry. So I really appreciate this conversation. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, for, for, do you have any message for, for those who will be watching? Yeah, um, I'd say, you know, if you are outside of nuclear engineering right now, if you're in high school, um, really just take the leap. Try to learn a little bit more about nuclear. It's not as daunting as you think. Um, and if you are in nuclear and want to get more involved, NAYGN, Generation Atomic, uh, they're great ways to build your network your knowledge, and you know, ultimately, 
uh, put you on a, a right path for your career to work in the industry. So thanks a lot, Osama, for having me. I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Awesome.